Let's go back to the 80s. Weird shirts with the collar all the way up, Ronald Reagan turned president, VHS tapes, and Japan got a fun bubble economy. Japan in the 80s sounded pretty awesome. The nightlife got super big, so that meant a lot of partying. Though the Soviet Union was still around, so that meant that if you wanted to fly to Japan from Europe, you had to first stop all the way in Anchorage, taking about 20 hours of flying or something. Also, everything was pricey because the yen got overvalued, which made land value in Japan really expensive. Also, Japan was during the 80s the second largest economy on Earth, getting close to the GDP of the United States. And Japan started to make a lot of stuff. Cars, electronics, video games, and all the other good stuff. And sent it all over the world. But let's see exactly what this fun time of an era is all about. The way how eras work in Japan is that it's based off the rule of the emperor and the Showa era that ended in the late 80s. It was also the same era Japan had during World War II. So in a way, the 80s happened in the same era as World War II because Emperor Showa was still around. It will remain the Showa era until 1989 when the emperor died and he got succeeded by his son, Akihito. Ever since the 1970s, karaoke got really popular in Japan, and one thing that helped was the Laserdisc. Yes, those giant DVD looking things. They were really important for karaoke, because you could easily switch through music tracks and change languages easily. Originally, karaoke sets used 8 track and cassette tapes, and then the company Pioneer started specializing Laserdisc for the karaoke market, and this wasn't too hard to do in Japan, because Japan had the largest market share of Laserdisc of any country at the time. And throughout the 80s, karaoke customers got to enjoy their night sight with the help of the technology of the Laserdisc. Ever since World War II, Japan had quite a few state industries. You had Japan Tobacco, Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Public Corporation, and of course, Japan National Railways. But like in the West, when Yasuhiro Nakasone turned Prime Minister in 1982 and ruled until 1987, he wanted to privatize all of these industries, similarly to Margaret Thatcher, who was Prime Minister of the UK during the 1980s. They grabbed JNR and split it up into seven companies, six passenger trains and one freight train, and formed the JR Group. And just like the privatization of British Rail, JNR got privatized in smaller steps, as you can't do a task like this all at once. So these JR companies are more of a semi private company, meaning they do have some connections with the government, prefectures, and cities, but mostly operate on their own for profit. And sometimes on bigger stations, JR companies promote other businesses or even have cafes and apartment buildings next to the train tracks, which is the land they got to expand their railroads, but they sometimes just put other businesses there to make a profit, like 1800s England. The privatization was done to increase efficiency, but now the Shinkansen is really fucking expensive. Mainly because it just costs so much money to operate Japanese rail and to make a profit from it. Look at all the manpower they need on the stations. But regardless, it was a big step in Japanese politics during the 1980s. In 1981, Nintendo released Donkey Kong, and four years later they released the Famicom and the Nintendo Entertainment System. What is it that fascinates kids so much about these games? What, what is it? The adventures and all that. It's when they're bored they have something to do instead of spending quarters. This not only made the console market bigger in Japan, but also in the North American market. North America had a video game crash because a lot of crap games came out. But Nintendo managed to make console gaming big again for the North American market and still make consoles to this day for the entire world. 
Also, a certain arcade game company started to develop their own consoles and rival Nintendo, especially in 1988 when the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis was released. Mega Drive 16-bit CPU 搭載. Sega. Come on along, I'll take you to the lullaby of Broadway. The Hickory and Valley Who. The lullaby of Broadway. And in the center of it all. In the Plaza Hotel in New York, the G5, the US, UK, France, Germany and Japan were having some fun. They signed an accord to devalue the US dollar for the Japanese yen and other currencies. What happened after this is that the Japanese yen got overvalued as fuck. Because of this, interest rates went down and people started partying. Before the Plaza Accord, the Japanese yen was valued at about 240 yen per American dollar, but after the drunk hotel meeting, it got to 150 yen within a year, and that is just freaking insane. And the Nikkei stock exchange and the land prices in Japan shot up like crazy during the 1980s. Also, this time, Sony bought Columbia Pictures in 1985, a big movie studio in the United States, and Mitsubishi Estate bought the Rockefeller Center in 1989. Japanese companies were on a buying spree. Also, funny thing is that a lot of Western celebrities did silly adverts for Japan, and because it wasn't broadcasted in the West, they didn't care. Also, it paid a lot. Until the internet got invented, and we can now see all of their crazy shit. Because of the crazy bubble that was going on, there were a lot of investments made in commercial property. The land value got so mad that in the Ginza district, the land value per square meter was 1.5 million bucks. Hell, the land value of the Imperial Palace, which was never for sale obviously, had the same land value as the entire housing market of California. And the value of the entire Tokyo metro area was four times the value of the entire United States. Also, the Yakuza had some connections with the realty markets and banks. They held holders for small prices of land to sell to estate companies that built crazy big development plans on them. Like the revitalization project in Yakuza 0? Yes, it's just like the revitalization project in Yakuza 0. That game is surprisingly accurate about the 80s. That's why I see so much footage and stuff from that game in this video. Yeah, though seriously, it was probably a pain getting land for your business or for your home during that time. Because of the bubble, more consumers got disposable income, and the one thing that people spent it on was VHS sets. This made the OVA market bigger, and it was around this time when hentai OVAs started to become big. As some of you might already know, the 1980s was known for the ultra-violent anime, like Violence Jack for example. And some anime around this time were quite sexual too, like Urusai Yatsura, or if you like weird anime like me, Junk Boy. Not only hentai and weird OVAs were getting popular, but definitely also anime films. My Neighbor Totoro from Hideo Miyazaki being super iconic. The 80s would also see the release of Grave of the Fireflies, another really popular film from Miyazaki. And of course the legendary Akira got released during this time. A film not only important for anime, but also for the entire animated film industry. Seriously, especially back in the day, if you saw Akira for the first time, it would have blown your head off. And even today, it still looks really good. And while anime already existed and was popular well before the 1980s, it doesn't mean that this era left a big impression on people. People at the time when they watched Japanese media felt really impressive. Hell, for some, maybe too impressive. Japan bashing was a term used when people were shit-talking Japan, their imported products, culture, politics and all that. 
Though Japan was kind of seen as a threat and a model for human development at this point, as Japan was super advanced and Western countries were scared that they weren't the super advanced ones anymore. You also notice this a lot in American media from the 1980s and 90s, where they act scared about Japan in this goofy way. Since 1978, 14 Class A war criminals were enshrined as martyrs. One of them includes the infamous Hideki Tojo, sort of the Hitler of Imperial Japan. He has a really big gravestone glorifying the atrocities he and his gang of idiots caused throughout the Asian continent. It was so bad that since then, the Emperor at the time, Showa, the Emperor that was also Emperor during World War II, refused to visit the shrine because of the dodgy people in there. Damn. On January 7th, 1989, Emperor Showa dies at the age of 87. At the time, he was the oldest and longest current holding monarch in the world. His death was the end of the Showa era, and his son Akihito got this enthronement ceremony on the 12th of November 1990. Now, the 80s is over, and the Heisei era started. Japan got drunk during the 80s after the Plaza Accord with their Western mates who enabled Japan's shenanigans. And like a fun night out, Japan got really drunk, entertained us, made some odd choices, got crazy, sing some karaoke, but then in the 90s, Japan will get a massive hangover from all the crazy partying he did last night. But hey, it was worth it. So, I hope you guys liked this video. Don't forget to dominate the sub button! And I'll see you guys next time with whatever I make. Keep watching hentai.